So this this uh this Michigan <clears throat> team, they need to impose, I think. I think it's over for them. Um, that game in November, do you think it could be a close game? Or do you think this will be like a true statement? Let's no. score a billion points on them. It's, or do you think weirdly it'll be close because it tends to always be that way? Well, it's, it's all comes down to Sharon Moore, right? <laughs> like this game should always be close. Like that's how heated it is. The, talking about the rivalry game with Ohio State and Michigan. But uh, I mean, outside of the rivalry, it should be a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah. Um. Looking at this, Zach, I would like to give you the Chris Drew Week 2 Big Ten Power Rankings. Mm -hmm. So, number one, I got Ohio State. They took care of business to me, looked apart, felt apart. Yeah. Number two, I've got USC. By a mile. Number three, this is where a little bit of the gap is, I've got Nebraska. I have them leapfrogging Penn State. Um, number four, I've got Penn State. Number five, I've got Oregon, who back-to-back -back weeks, maybe there's some sort of Dan Lanning kryptonite in Idaho that they bring out there. I told you he's allergic to potatoes. Got to be. Because they look terrible again against Boise State. A potato allergy. So I got Oregon five, Washington six, Rutgers seven, Illinois eight after a big one over Kansas, Michigan nine, and then Iowa 10. Now, Michigan State is 2-0. and I didn't know where to place them because I don't know how good Maryland is yet, and I still think, at least on one side of the ball, Michigan is elite. Same with Iowa. I don't know if Michigan State is elite on one side of the ball. So that is yeah. my uh, Chris Drew top 10. Anything you hate, anything you would move, are we, we good? No, I mean, I think you put a lot of weight into Colorado being something that they're not. I mean, Nebraska, I think Nebraska looked outstanding. This is just, it's just way too early, right? Nebraska – I guess kind of got tested. They had to play yeah. some NFL, an NFL quarterback and some NFL re receivers. But outside of that, I mean, they just, they abuse Colorado up front because Colorado takes abuse up front. <laughs> so I, I guess the reason I put them ahead of Penn State is because of the run that your Bowling Green team oh, yeah, I, gave, I don't... gave Penn State. And also, like, I think that that Colorado team, or I thought in my head, okay, at least on offense alone, they're going to be a top 15 team in the country. Like, just mm -hmm. like their offense is going to be top 15 yeah. in the country. And, I didn't know if Nebraska had the horses outside to run with those receivers. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, Bro had 100 yards, but they had the pick six on their door. Yeah. Like, and so for me, it's like, okay, look, like they've played probably the best quarterback out of all the teams in the oh, Big Ten so sure. far. And probably the best receiver of all the teams in the Big Ten for so far. For sure. And the best number two receiver of all the teams in the Big mm -hmm. Ten. And they've looked and felt apart. That's why I put them at three. I know it's early, but these are week-to-week -week rankings. Yeah, I, I don't disagree because my Falcons almost pulled one off on Penn State. Yeah. Honestly, that game – Interestingly enough, made me a little nervous. The Mac went almost went back to back to start twelve o'clock slot and three thirty slot, and I'm over here thinking like, "Hold up, bro! Western Michigan, they, we saw them scare Wisconsin last week. Yeah, I'm Are they really like that? Is this about to be some weird, goofy shit at night?" Uh, there's no doubt. The Mac had a strong showing until that kickoff in the horseshoe. Yeah, but it's also some like night games against weird teams and you get a little bit of the, the yips, the yeah. yips. So that is uh that that's it. I, I don't know where you would place Oregon and Washington. I still don't like I think that Oregon's a better football team, but they're not playing better football than Washington. Yeah, that's why it's too early, right? Like <laughs> on paper, and and do I believe Oregon would beat Washington in a game? Yes. Now, what the film has shown me, fuck no. I wouldn't even have Oregon in the top 10. They look terrible. I told you before the show. This Miami shit going on down south, South Beach, is a diversion. The real scary team in the country in this 12 team playoff is USC. I agree. They're the team that could actually be back. Yeah. Because forever we've talked about, well, if Lincoln Riley just gets a defense, and it became kind of those like funny running jokes. Like that's like saying if Shaq could shoot free throws, he would be right. this, that, and the third. It's never happening. So quit asking. Nick Saban voice. No, no, no. It's happening. Yeah. Week one against LSU, a good LSU team. They tackled. They defended. They looked and felt apart. I know it's just Utah State week two, Zach. But, but shutout. Fuck. A shutout's a shutout. The first shutout I've seen from Lincoln Riley. Yeah. Shutting out anybody's hard to do. <clears throat> they are the kid who we made fun of for painting their fingernails, for being a little weirdo. That kid went home and got the gun. Yeah. And now they're back in the school. I know we're worried about whatever, worried about Miami because their fans are loud. Right. They're really obnoxious. Miami's 12-0. and 0. Miami's back. That's a diversion. It the is. real scary team out west was school shooter Miller Moss. Yeah. I mean, it's it, USC is – but I mean, they definitely are the second best team through two games in the Big Ten. And I think there's a significant gap from, from two to the rest. Significant. And the reason I also think they're really, really dangerous when it comes to a 12-team playoff is because we know – that Lincoln Riley schematically can scheme up anybody. Oh, like, yeah. they are like 2022 Ohio State. 
they can get you in a shootout. And I've seen Lincoln Riley have a guy like Kirby Smart on the ropes before when he was at Oklahoma, and then he the fucking onside kick was so dumb. So dumb. But we know that they're going to be able to put together an offensive game plan to score points, especially with a little bit of a break. God forbid they get a bye. We know they can play offense, the defense. Yeah. And they're winning these games. They won that game in a blowout. And I think their most physically gifted player has not figured out yet. Once Zachariah Branch gets going, oh, my goodness. Yeah. They're the real scary team, not Miami, at least to me. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. And it's fortunate for Buckeye fans that they're not on the schedule. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, USC has a tough go other than outside of missing Ohio State, which they will obviously have to play them in the Big Ten Championship game if it all works out this way. I mean, they got to go to the big house, Wisconsin at home, skip Minnesota, Penn State comes to USC, Maryland, Rutgers. Those are not bottom feeder Big Ten schools. No. Washington, Nebraska, UCLA sucks, and then catch Notre Dame at the end of the year. And to me, that just means that they're going to go into the playoff if they make it there, battle-tested. Yeah. Miami's about to go from Syracuse to having to play fucking Bama. Yeah. Like, that is a really, really wide gap. Um, I'm. I, it's funny because if someone would have asked both of us last November of the Pac-12 teams coming to town, who were you least worried about? I would have I said it. I'm always worried about USC. Oh, yeah. At the time, DeBoer was at Washington building a, pro a program, and I'm really, really high on Dan Lanning. Again, I mean, UCLA would have been your, been your pick, but outside of UCLA. Oh, outside of UCLA. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> fuck UCLA. I'm talking about other, other big Like, that's three. the obvious one. Right, 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 right. Uh, uh, of those groups. So, I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring them. They're, they're the real team out West. And it's funny because it's like if someone were to close your eyes, it feels like like Oregon is playing how we would expect USC to play. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like they switch roles. Yeah, Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. <laughs> they swapped. <laughs> um, but let's get to a, a commercial break. I still want to break down Ohio State and give you my thoughts on what was honestly like a perfect performance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, they, they didn't really do anything where I was like, damn. I mean, there's one thing. There's one thing I, I do want to address. But we'll get to that after the break. We'll be right back. All right, Menace Army, I don't know about you. When I sleep... I can't be overheated. I can't be too hot. If I am, I'm, I sweat. I wake up, and I don't. I don't get good quality sleep. Well, our sponsor Miracle Made has got you covered. Their sheets are are inspired by NASA with silver infused fabrics that make the sheets have self cooling properties for better quality sleep. They're also self cleaning. The sheets that are fused with the silver pre prevent up to ninety nine point seven percent of bacterial growth, leaving making them fresher and cleaner longer. You don't have to do laundry as much. I bet. I bet your wife will like that. Go to miracle, uh, trymiracle.com slash menace to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift one for loved ones, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an additional 20% off. Miracle's so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund, every penny back. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code menace to claim your three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash menace to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Uh, nothing like throwing a little thank you at the end of an ad read. Yep, shout out to uh, shout out to them. Um, this is a stat for you, just probably why it felt like CJ Stroud was balling. On third and fourth down in week one, nine for nine, 85 yards and two touchdowns. Dude was hooping. Hooping. He's Hoop. so good. Uh, let's talk Ohio State. You got. I want to talk Ohio State, and then we're going to get to super chats, and then we'll get on out of here on a fine Monday. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> I think. I mean, the watching Ohio State this weekend felt like what we hoped it was last weekend, right? Mm -hmm. We really hoped it would come out, cook on all cylinders. Quinshawn would pop off, and you'd be like, "Fuck yeah, national champs!" And it, week one wasn't pretty. That happens yeah. coming out of training camp, your first time playing a live team. It can happen. What needs to happen is the level up from week one to week two, and that's exactly what happened. Will Howard was outstanding. Play, Chip Kelly developed a phenomenal game plan for, for him. Mm -hmm. He's not a pinpoint accurate drop back passer. He's not. But play actions, RPOs, can make him extremely effective, especially with his athleticism and willingness to run. I mean, he had an 85% completion percentage when the run game was attached to it, whether it was an RPO or play action. 54% on just pure drop back. That's just who he is, and that's okay. It doesn't mean he's not in a Heisman conversation. It doesn't mean that they can't win the natty. Probably not an NFL quarterback mm -mm. if that continues, but that's okay. The biggest level up on offense, though, was the O-line. They looked how they were supposed to look week one. I mean, 26 pass attempts, only four quarterback pressures. The tackles didn't allow a single pressure. 
It's a and massive positive. Massive. And then in the run game, Ohio State rushed for 273 yards. 113 of those yards were after contact, which means that 160 of those yards were free yards. It was perfectly blocked. The lane was open. 160 of 273 yards really get credited to the O-line. That's outstanding. I thought Quinshawn was dynamic. Nine rushes. Six, he forced seven missed tackles. More than any the entire offense combined. And the best run of the day got called back. It did. It did. An 80-yard touchdown gets called back. The dumbass holding penalty. The only issue I have on offense, which is just reinforcing what I said all offseason was going to be my only question and issue I have on offense, is the tight end position. To me, that's that's the one pimple right now. I mean, G. Scott was the lowest graded player that played 10 snaps or more. 25 total players played 10 or more snaps. He was 25th. 55% grade. And he's the one that had the, the holding penalty. I know they yeah. said it was number 13, but they showed the replay. It was him on the hold, which wasn't necessary. He would have scored either, either way. It's just, he, that's the one. G. Scott's got to level up. We, we're calling G. Scott out for this offense to cook on all cylinders. The tight end position is the one that needs to go. On defense, fucking stupid. Yeah. Three missed tackles the whole game. Three. Yeah, they're so good. Cody Simon was the highest grade, uh, highest grade on defense. C.J. Hicks was the lowest. 10 plus snaps. Uh, good to see Cody play in his return. I was worried. I, you yeah. know, I, I paid close attention to him because I was like, are you going to be more impactful than Arvell Reese? I, I need to know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got to see it or else Arvell Reese should start, right? right? I thought he was outstanding. Jack Sawyer's a monster. Tyleek was the only other defender with more than one quarterback pressure. He had two. Jack Sawyer had six. Jeez. He That's is, the one, bro. Dude, he is just ridiculous. And they're finally unleashing him, which I love to see. I thought it was an outstanding game for the Buckeyes. And obviously, Jeremiah Smith. He's the fourth most productive receiver in Power 5 football right now. 19.2 yards per catch. Number four in the country as a true freshman is impressive. So he's played six quarters so far. He's got, 200, he's got 211 yards, 11 receptions, three touchdowns. Calvin Johnson and Julio Jones both started game one as true freshmen at Georgia Tech and Alabama. Julio Jones finished the year with 900 yards and I believe four touchdowns. And um, – Calvin had 800 yards and I believe seven touchdowns. Maybe double check that for me, Pat. And Jeremiah Smith's on pace for over 1,200 and over 11 touchdowns. So we're yeah. talking about truly. I mean, that's that's the class we're in. He's an alien. That's. I mean, to, what was that? A hitch that he housed? Yeah. It's just. I mean, he's he's really fucking good, and I'm excited to see him against a top 15 defense in press man coverage. I'm excited to see him against Will Johnson. I want to see how good is this kid. Yeah. Can he do what Marv couldn't? Is the real question? Ooh. Ooh. Already as a freshman. Ooh. Also, the uh, the GPS tracker on the touchdown that he had twenty one point seven miles per hour. That's crazy. So. Will Howard goes twenty four. <laughs> what, what the fuck are we talking <laughs> about? Twenty one point seven miles per hour is scooting. <laughs> yeah, for a receiver his size, fucking, and his, and his age. Not just a receiver his size, like any receiver, no, for anyone. Mm -hmm. But I mean, then you add into the fact he's eighteen and that big and over two twenty, or like he's fucking. like two fifteen. Wild, just just fucking, um, just fucking outrageous. I mean, they look like the true Death Star team. That's how you're supposed to look. So, uh, so, so I love, I love seeing it. Um, also, bro, what a soft ass penalty, bro. Getting, uh, fucking Denzel Burke tossed in the first quarter. Yeah, come on, man. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? But they didn't miss a beat. I know it was just no. Well, obviously, like Jermaine Matthews is a hooper too. Yeah, like, he, those, those just it's, it's good to see depth. And mm -hmm. honestly, I ain't need to see Denzel against that team. That's fair. I guess I just want the interception numbers so he can like yeah. win the Thorpe Award because I know that like the writers don't watch film. Oh yeah, they just like look at interception numbers and like who was like who had the most picks on the best best defense. Yeah, we'll give you the uh, that that award.